Hello and welcome to my instance video series. Are you prepared? Today I will summarize Failing Caverns or VC for short. I will first go through the facts and later state my opinions about the dungeon, the quests and drops and so on. First off, the minimum level to enter the dungeon is level 10. This is especially useful for uh, players planning to boost other characters or obtaining twink gear, since a lot of the drops in Failing Caverns are the best twink, best in slot for some twink items at level 19. If you're planning on running a, a regular group, uh, you sh the recommended level is 18 to 25, uh, but I would stress that at least some of the group members are 20 or, or above, because the last boss is quite challenging for, for many groups especially if, if spawns bug a bit and, and so on. Uh, trash mobs in the instance are somewhere between 18 and 22. So if you are level 18, you could have maybe not a hard time hitting uh, 22 mobs, but it will, will uh, you will not do uh, full damage at least. Uh, there are eight bosses in total and the highest level is level 22. Uh, Veiling Caverns is located in uh, the Barrens, uh, and it's actually uh, you can actually see it on the map. Um, it's quite easy to find the instance. There are seven quests for the Horde. Uh, the required level for for uh, most of the quests are between thirteen and fifteen. I highly recommend that you pick them all up at level 15 just to make yourself ready for the actual instance if you find a group there is the most important quest is is the leaders of the fang it has quite a long pre-quest chain which i will go into in a moment there's also some drops in the instance that gives uh, quite a nice quest with a lot of extra xp and there's two quests that can be done outside the, the instance, one that has to be done outside and one that can be done both outside and inside. Out of this seven quests, five in total can be uh, done by the Alliance. Uh, I don't really recommend running uh, Bailing Caverns as Alliance, at least not in a regular group, because there will be a lot of ganking uh, running into to Horde territory, basically. But if you bring a level 60 character to boost you, then sure, why not? Um, most of the quests, uh, two of the quests can be fetched in Ratchet, and two of the quests can be fetched just in the cave above Bailing Caverns. And uh, the last quest here is, is dropped from the last boss. Leaders of the Fang, the pre-quests. Uh, you have to be level 14 to, to be able to pick up the, the final quest for Leaders of the Fang. Uh, the pre-quest giver is Tonga Rune Totem, and there are totally five quests in this chain. The first three are actual quests, so to speak, and the, the last two is just run around in Thunder Bluff until you get the Leaders of the Fang quest. You pick it up in Crossroads at uh, Tonga Rune Totem, or you can get a quest from, from Thunder Bluff that will tell you to speak to Tonga Rune Totem. When you finally got instance quest, um, you get it from Nara Wildmane in the Elder Rise, and you will have to loot four items from uh, four bosses in the uh, Veiling Caverns. The rewards for this quest are extremely good, uh, either a caster staff called the Crescent Staff or the uh, Wing Blade for um, melee characters. Uh, the Wing Blade will be used quite quite a long way into the, even the 20s, so it's a, quite a good item to pick up. Uh, the next quest is the Serpent Bloom. Uh, the quest giver is Apothecary Sama, and he's in the cave below the Spirit Rise. Uh, the quest is to pick up Serpent Blooms inside the instance. Uh, this quest can be quite hard to, to complete during an, an instance run, 
so you really have to prioritize and try to to get the flowers because there's probably not enough flowers for for all five party members to complete this quest so it's quite common that you actually don't really complete this uh, in one run uh, the reward for this is the apothecary gloves and which are quite nice uh, deviate hides is uh, a quest that is available to both horde and alliance uh, it's picked up by nalpak and he is located in a cave above the veiling caverns the quest is um, in the quest you're supposed to loot deviate hides and they drop from basically every trash mob and boss in veiling caverns uh, but you're supposed to collect 20 this can be if you're unfortunate you might not actually get 20 you might get 17 or something then you can actually loot some outside of the dungeon if needed uh, the reward for this quest is either the 10 slot bag or some um, agility pants uh, leather pants i suggest that you pick the 10 slot bag uh, or highly recommend it the next quest is the deviate eradication it's available to both horde and alliance you need to be level 15 to pick it up it's also in the cave above veiling caverns from a quest giver called ebru um, and this is basically a kill quest that you will easily manage to do if you run a full run in veiling caverns the reward from it is that you get to pick one of these three items either the male gloves uh, a leather working recipe or the sizzle stick which is a wand which is really good for casters the next quest is the glowing shard this item drops from the last boss if you manage to complete it and it's available to both horde and alliance this quest starts starts another quest when you should run around in the barrens to ratchet and to some mountains and stuff before you actually receive any um, any loot but all this running around gives quite a lot of XP so it's quite a good quest in that sense uh, you get to choose from quite nice uh, mail boots or the first cloth shoulders that you will be able to acquire uh, most people tend to go for the cloth shoulders even if they are male because they have three stamina the next quest is trouble at the docks uh, this this quest can be picked up in ratchet by the quest giver crane operator Bigglefuss, and the quest is to loot the 99 year old port this this uh, item can be looted from a goblin corpse just outside the instance so quite near to the instance entrance there should be a goblin corpse guarded by some raptors and some invisible raptors stealth raptors uh, this this quest gives uh, quite a lot of xp gold and r reputation with ratchet but most groups tend to not do this so don't expect that you can finish this one the last quest is smart drinks and for this one you need to do a pre-quest it's available to both alliance and horde and the pre-quest giver is the same quest giver as the actual quest uh, which is called me buck missy ricks which is a goblin female in ratchet and and the the prequest is called raptor horns and basically you need to kill raptors and take the drops from the raptors there is quite a nice spot down here near north watch hold that has a lot of raptors there's another baron's quest that leads you here i think it's silver something uh, so so they could be done sim simultaneously uh, when you actually get the real quest from Mibok Miserix, you need to loot Veiling Essence. And these drop from oozes. There are some oozes in the instance, not very many. And there are a lot of oozes outside the instance. So most people will not actually be able to do this inside the instance. 
but it should be quite easy to pick up the last few just outside instance. There are even some Uses that are non-elite, apparently. I haven't seen them, but there, there are. Uh, the, the quest gives XP, gold, and reputation with Ratchet. So for drops, there are eight bosses in total in, in um, Veiling Caverns, and I think there's a rare boss even. I haven't put that up here. Uh, Lady Anacondra is level 20. She, she drops uh, these white leather shoulders, which is basically the first shoulders that most users can pick up. She can also drop the snakeskin bag, which is a 10 slot bag. And she drops the belt of the fang, which she has a chance to do. Um, Crash is a turtle wandering around uh, in the water. He can drop the Crash back, which is a very good shield for warriors, and, and this will last quite a long while. Or he will drop the Worn Turtle Shell Shield, which is still quite good, but, but nothing compared to Crash back. Uh, Lord Cobran is level 20. He can drop the Robe of Moccasin. Cobran's Grasp or Leggings of the Fang. Uh, all are quite nice loots. Uh, Robe of Moccasin is, is not great for most casters. There's some waste stats on it, but if it drops, try to pick it up anyway. The Spirit is nice while leveling. Lord Pythas is level 21. He can drop the Armor of Fang and the Stinging Viper. The Stinging Viper is really an an excellent maze. It's quite slow and it has a small proc also. Uh, this this is very good for rogues or for uh, warriors or, or basically any melee class because of the slow attack speed. You will do quite a lot of damage on your special swings. Scum, which is a lizard. He's level 21. He can drop this agility cloak or his uh, tail spike dagger. Uh, the dagger is nothing special, but, but the cloak is, is one of the best cloaks that you can have on this level. Lord Serpentis. He can drop Serpent Gloves, Savage Throthers, Venom Strike and Foot Pads of the Fang. Venom Strike is actually one of the best bows that you can, uh, can have until even, I think, level 30 almost. So for Hunters, this is quite a big pickup if you can it pick this up. Um, otherwise the, the boots are quite nice, they have good stats. Uh, as you can see the set bonus of the fang set is a bit weird. So it's more of a druid or shaman set per se, but some of the pieces are quite good even for rogues or warriors. Um, Verdant the Everliving, level 21. Uh, he can drop the Living Root, which is a very good staff for, for, most, um, for most casters. However, the, the quest, the quest uh, reward from Lords of the Fang is, is probably better for most classes. So it's, it's not the end of the world if this doesn't drop. The Seed Cloud Buckler is quite nice as well. Uh, I guess this is Shaman or Paladin. Buckler basically because crest crash shield is better if you get that one. But this could be a nice backup. And the sporid cape is nothing special. Okay, Mutanus the Devourer. To access Mutanus the Devourer, you need to escort the disciple of Naralex, uh, the druid that you met in the beginning. And he will start channeling um a spell to, to summon Mutanus the Devourer and then there will be waves of mobs coming towards you. This is where most groups wipe. Because sometimes it's a bit bugged and you get two mobs and in the next wave you get ten. And sometimes it works out fine. But be prepared that your group might not might not complete this for for. Uh, um, a lot of different reasons, but but mainly, this this encounter is kind of bugged in in some reasons, um, and and your party needs to be 
tiptoe to 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 do this at the lower level at least uh, anyway he can drop three items uh, the cloth shoulders that restores health I guess their shoulders is is nice on this level you don't have a lot of shoulders but this equip is not really that great I think uh, deep fathom ring is is great this is probably a ring that most casters will keep for for even up to level 40 maybe so this is a really good drop the mutant scale breastplate for horde at least um, warriors will probably use this up to level 30 probably for alliance i don't know about paladins but I i'm guessing they will use it even longer because warrior gets a quest that re they receive another breastplate at level 30. So, my thoughts about Veiling Caverns run dungeon. Before running Veiling Caverns, make sure to complete the prequest for Leaders of the Fang so that you can obtain a, a great weapon upgrade. This is the most important quest. All the other quests you can basically pick up anyway and the other quest that has a prequest is not that important. Uh, be aware that the last boss is quite hard and most groups will not be able to take him. I'd say it's about 50-50 uh, depending if, if the spawns are a bit bugged or if you ninja pull or, or anything like that. Uh, if you're unable to complete the boss don't really recommend running the instance again unless by doing so you can complete more quests that you didn't complete the first time let's say it's a serpent blooms trouble at the docks or deviate hides if if you still need hides and stuff for that then then you should probably run it again um, depending on your class it can be quite advantageous to run the instance multiple times some items are serious upgrades that will be useful for a long time, like Venom Strike is, is very good. Uh, and, and some of the items from the last boss can be very useful, but I'd say Venom Strike is really the only thing that, that you should try to pick up as a hunter. Uh, as a cloth user, I would only run the instance once to complete all the quests and then... then um, I don't really need any drop from the instance per se. As a leather or male user, I could consider running the instance one or more times just to get a few more items. There are a lot of leather items that are good in this instance. Uh, and as a hunter, I would probably run the instance three times maybe before giving up on Venom Strike. But, but Venom Strike has a 25% drop chance, so it's it's quite low and you're not guaranteed to, to get it and from previous experience other people will probably roll on it as well if they're inexperienced like hunter or rogues and uh, warriors so it's not a guaranteed thing that you get venom strike but it is a really good bow Thank you for watching. Links to dbvanillagaming.org can be found in the description for all the quests and the bosses. Please comment with suggestions on how to improve the video. Thank you.